Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Control episode 26 now. Um, last episode we uh, had a bit of super melee with me and Webs. Um, the keys were getting a little bit stuck um, but I have kind of fixed the keyboard now it's better. It's quite annoying because my Korra got destroyed pretty quickly which is quite annoying because that was one of my best ships and I'm, I'm quite good at Korra. Even though it's not very useful in the um, in the campaign I do like to play a bit of super melee. Um, have a few friends that play it. And we have some tournaments sometimes. But I'm back in the actual campaign. Um, episode 24 was last time I played the campaign. But now, um, we want to go and ch see if we can find Threadash. Last time, we got the Ilrath to go and attack the Threadash. Um, so we want to go and see um, what's kind of happened to the Threadash. See if any of them are still around. See what's going on. Maybe they're a bit angry. I don't know. We'll have to go and find out. Um, so I'm going to travel through Quasi Space to the Draconis constellation, that's about where they live. Um, so, uh, first of all though, I want to go and see if we can find one of those planets that Shafixti were talking about. They said they found a weird planet at Zeta Sextantis, and um, we're going to go and see if we can investigate it, see if there's anything cool there. Um, and hopefully, we can find something awesome. He said he found a rainbowy thing, and the Mel Normay talked about the rainbow world, so maybe this is a rainbow world. Um, I mean, that makes sense. So let's go to Zeta Sextantis now. There's a ship down there, and there's also a Slylandro. Uh, oh, there, there, there definitely is a strange colored planet right in the center there. You can see it um, very close to the sun. Let's meet this Slylandro though, because um, we now have the code, the uh, destruct sequence, so we can start to. Um, pretty much, I guess. I don't know what happens. Let's see. Transmit to struct sequence. There we go. Is that it? Okay, there we go. Oh, we get the RUs as well. Oh, that's pretty nice. So we can just go around just killing all the Slylandro. We get RUs from pretty much not fighting at all. Not that we really need that. I mean, we could destroy them pretty easily anyway. They've got a very short range um, attack and we've got a really long range one, so... Wouldn't be too much trouble anyway. But here we go. Look at this world. And I missed it. Of course I missed it. Um, it's like got all different colours. Oh my god, this looks crazy. Look at that. Look at that surface. Rainbow World. Weather class 3. Mineral scan. Lots of radioactive, so not a bad planet in terms of uh, minerals, which is cool. So let's go down to the surface. Doesn't look like there's any energy signatures or anything cool about this planet. Doesn't look like there's anything kind of there. Kind of just looks a bit. Kind of looks like a, a general radioactive world. There's a bit of like lightning, a bit of weather. But otherwise, it's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, normal planet. I mean, get a bit of uh, radioactives. Why not? While we're here, not a, not bad, but interesting. Um, the Mel normally will pay for the knowledge of where this planet is. Not too much use now since we've just kind of looted the whole planet. But never mind. Uh, oh, here comes another Slylandro. We can uh, take down this guy as well. Come to a Slylandro. You'll go down. Right, let's take this down. Converse, I guess. We come in peace. And, and transmit destruction circuitry. There we go. Another 550 IU. So we've pretty much got about uh, 1,500 IU in about three minutes there. Pretty good. Um, there we go. That's very useful, that self-destruct sequence. And I guess that... Um, oh, the Ilrath on the move there, you can see. That's pretty cool. So I guess if you don't look at the star map for a while, you um, see it out. Uh, at the time of me narrating this, because basically, um, I don't know if I explained this before, I think I did once. Um, the way I record Star Control is I play it, and then I narrate over the top of it. And um, this footage was actually taking quite a while back. Oh, here's the Bakunk. Look at these guys. My nest mate surprises me with extra fat and spicy grabs for early meal. Then I am complimented on my fine display of ceremonial tongues. To top it off, I encountered a human friend, loved by all the kunk. Can things get any better? No, they can't, my friend. What's the news? What is the news? Or what should we say, actually? Should we just say bye? Or we'll, we'll have a bit of trouble. We're having a bit of trouble. I doubt these guys are going to help us at all, though. Also, I can tell you about another dream. Just Perhaps I will tell you about my dream. Oh, not another dream. In this dream there was a small oh, no, actually, we've already uh, we've already heard this, so uh, we're just going to say goodbye to the cunk. Captain, 
Um, thank you very much for for being here. So what I was saying is that um, since the recording of this video, the beta for the um, HD remake has come out, so that's pretty cool. There's some bug fixes, like the one that we encountered a few episodes back, which is pretty cool. But now we're going into Quasi Space to go and look at another planet. And this planet is um, a very interesting one that we are very interested in. It is um, Beta Camelopardaris, I think it's called, if I recall. And that was the planet that... Um, was thought to have a big metal vault on it. Um, one of the um, someone said I can't remember who it was now, but I definitely remember it. Someone said there was a huge metal vault on Beta Camelopardaris, which is in Urquan space. So that might be interesting. It might be something to do with the Urquan. Um, I think it might have been the um, the Shafixi actually, um, which is quite good. Okay, so let's go and see what's happening on uh, one of these planets. I wonder which one it is. I can't remember. Um, I think it was one of the moons of the first planet, I think they said, so let's go here and check. Might have been, oh, it might have been this, um, this blue world here, actually, the first, the first planet of the first moon. The first moon of the first planet. Okay, let's scan. Is there anything here? No, there isn't. Okay, maybe it is in that planet, then. It was definitely a moon, I remember. Um, definitely was a moon. Well, for some reason, I thought that, um, it was Beta Camelopardaris. But it was actually Epsilon. Um, had a look back at the video. I couldn't find it anywhere. I don't know. I, I thought it was like the moon of the first planet. Um, so I looked everywhere and I couldn't find it. So I then looked back and it turned out that it was actually on the first moon of the first planet of Epsilon, Kevin Lepidaris, instead. Um, so there should be something here. Ah, there they are. There we go. Down there. Pretty dangerous planet. There's a few nice green minerals. But uh, we're mostly. Oh my word, look at this. There is a big vault. Port's on surface. What have we found? Some kind of vault. It's impervious to our weapon and appears similar to the Urquans. Um, whatever, la la Oh, okay. So it's basically the same metal the Urquan used. So this is definitely something that the Urquan have used. There's some sort of computer entry system. That's interesting. Okay. Well, there we go. We can't do anything about it, but that certainly might have a big part in the story. I don't know. Why would it be there if it didn't have some importance? Um, there we go. We found a big metal vault on Epsilon Camelopardaris 1-1. Or 1-8. There are some uh, Urquan here. Um, didn't really explain. So I might take down these Urquan. Why not? Urquan are pretty fun to uh, to destroy. Let's go. Oh, just went past them. Too quick for them, you see. Look, they're trying to chase me. They can't get me. Oh, they got me. That's a shame. There's three groups, I'll just take down the one. Um, I'll just... I'll just take down these two. We will give you no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Renegade human. You're not much of a listener, are you? <laughs> That's a good question. A final command, human. But it is more of a plea. Your insubordination has guaranteed your death. There can be no alternative. But your species has not yet crossed the threshold of disobedience that would require us to decimate Earth. You have survived combat with us before. You may survive the ensuing battle. If this happens, leave. Return to your home. Await our arrival there. If you interfere with us here, we may lose the doctrinal conflict with the Korah. If we are defeated, you are defeated as well. The Korah will be unleashed. They will begin a genocidal orgy, cleansing all known sentience. They will crack the slave shield around Earth and reduce the surface of your blue world to cinders. Well... To be honest, I I can understand where he's coming from, but uh, to be honest, 
I'm still not sure if these are the bad guys or the good guys. You know, they're protecting us from the Korra and they're fighting against the Korra. But first of all, from the uh, from the Super Lamini battle, um, I don't understand how the Urquan could possibly lose to the Korra. I mean, you know, you literally need like seven fusion blasts. You just need to, and they've got enough battery for seven fusion blasts. So if you're accurate, you can take down Korra straight away. So I don't know what problem they're having. In the same way, Korra could probably take down Urquan very quickly. Um, they're both very offensive ships. Um, so I don't know. Do we just listen to them? I don't. I don't think so. I think we just got to keep going. We'll destroy both Urquan in the end, and then problem solved. Who's these guys? Are these more Urquan or are these Korra? Well, they're both Urquan, but I don't know. I should call them Korra and Urquan. That's what it's called. Oh, it's Korra. We are the Urquan Korra. Our nature. The fulfillment of our fate requires your destruction. I don't think it does because uh, it never really works for you, does it? You should, you should be creepy. That's an interesting one. Um, what should we say? Before We've heard enough madness. Beings, Goodbye. We share with them this comforting fact: this life of yours. Uh, no, it won't actually, because you'll die. Following this statement is but one of the many lives you will live. Perhaps in your next incarnation. You will be born an Urquan. Who knows, maybe. First of all, I've got to destroy you first. I've, d I've destroyed so many Korra before. I mean, it's not so difficult, is it? I mean... Okay, you're doing that, are you? Doing some defensive techniques. No, it's not going to work, I'm afraid. Did four damage to me. Four members were killed, but uh, 42 of yours were killed. Um, thank you for your RUs. Um, good night, Mr. Whatever your name was. I can't even remember. Death. Whatever. They're not very, uh... You know, they don't really think about the names that much. I think... I think that his parents were, were not very... They didn't really care about them too much. They were probably called Death as well, so... I don't know. It's an interesting name choice. I, mean, I you know, don't normally think about that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Earth now. Um, just, you know, in general, just kind of go back, kind of regroup. Get a bit of fuel up. And uh, just do some cool stuff. First of all, I want to call the Melnorme because I want to buy some information from them. We haven't had some information from them for a bit. Um, and there is so much information, I didn't realize how much information there was. Uh, apparently, there's like 15 information on species, and there's about 10 on. 10, uh, what, what's it called? 10 current events, and about 15 historical events as well. So, we definitely want to go through all of those. Um, so, pretty important we do. Here they are. Oh god. No, I didn't. I didn't do anything. Um. What? You didn't see it? Surely you... Oh, never mind. What was that? What was that about? That's strange. That's a strange thing that was said to me. Keel for easy. Kill for easy. Who are those again? Captain. I um, okay, I wish to sell Rim. Ah, here we go. Rainbow World locations. How many uh, RUs do we get for this? Let's see. Five hundred. Look at that. One of the Rainbow Worlds, which so fascinate us. In exchange. How do they have so much information and then not know about the Rainbow Worlds? That's quite strange. There we go. Now we can make some purchases with that, that's pretty good. 500 credits, I wasn't expecting that. So, first of all, information. And we want to get uh, some information about current events. There are weaknesses in the division between dimensions. For example, your vessel uses such weaknesses to enter hyperspace. However, there are other weak spots in the galaxy which lead to yet different dimensions. One such portal exists nearby, between the Chandra Sekar and Kolum Bay constellations. The portal opens only a short time each month, starting on the 17th. Since we have never entered the portal, we can give no more information on this subject. Okay, well that wasn't too useful since we've already discovered Quasi Portal, but uh, what about alien race um, data? The Quran. They are an Urquan subspecies who split off from the main species many thousands of years ago. 
Their present fight is a ritual reenacting of a major difference of opinion between two rival Urquan leaders. After the Urquan overwhelmed their slave masters, the Dinyare, the Kora are immune to reason. Having long ago lost the ability to see their situation objectively, they live in a self-maintained paradox. To ensure their safety and security, the Kora fight an endless battle against all other sentient species. Okay, um, again, we've already kind of known about that, so finally, historical information. One race fought back, Itaeo. These slow, quiet creatures were silicon-based life forms, but bore little resemblance to the modern Chenjesu. Itaeo were natural immune to the Dinyari psychic compulsion. They were unaffected by the creature's power, and the Dinyare would not permit anyone to exist outside their control. So they ordered the remaining races of the Milieu to attack and destroy the Taelo home planet. This planet was one of the few Milieu worlds located in this region of space. I believe you call their star Delta Vulpecule. Their home was a moon revolving about. How did we miss this when we went to go and see the oars? We're gonna have to go and check that out. The Titaero were indeed eliminated. However, at the time of their devastation, they had completed a device which they thought would give other races psychic immunity like their own. What happened to this device? This shield? It's hard to say. Maybe it was destroyed in the attack on their homeworld. Maybe not. Alright, so we're going to have to definitely go and find that shield because that's going to be really, really useful um, in getting that Dinyari or at least defeating it or killing it or whatever that happens to it, I don't know. Um, I'm not really sure. But we definitely need to go back to Delta Vulpecula. That's definitely what we... Uh, is a priority right now is get that shield before the ores realize its potential or whatever I don't know and um, they don't I don't know what's gonna happen but we definitely need to go to the Vulpiculi system again we'll go and meet some more ores it's gonna be amazing it's been about what 15 episodes since we talked to an ores that's a long time without the ores so we'll go back there um, we're also gonna have to go up there to the Draconis system up in the top left of the map so we've got a load of stuff to do so I'll see you next time in Star Control Episode 27.